everyone and welcome to Meeple Leaf Reviews. I'm Jeffrey Weber and today I'm going to be doing a review of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, Jack the Ripper, and West End Adventures. Whew, that's a long name for a game. It's a standalone expansion for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Um, so let's just jump right in with art and components. This game is very minimalist in terms of the components. It has some case booklets, some newspapers, a directory, and that's it. There's no cardboard tokens, wooden pieces, miniatures. There is some artwork, some nice sketch art through the different case booklets. So it's not just like you're looking at walls and walls of text. Now the theme for this game, like the name of the game would imply, is it's Sherlock Holmes. You're going to be solving different cases. But you don't play as Sherlock. You're one of the Baker Street regulars working with Mr. Wiggins, and you're trying to solve the case at the same time that Sherlock is. So you're going your own separate ways, and then you're going to meet up at the end and kind of compare notes to see who solved it quicker. I really feel the theme of this game. I feel like I'm, I'm in this story, I'm in this world, I'm trying to take what little information I have and make the right deductive leaps to, to solve the case. I love the idea of the newspapers where I'm, I'm in this world and there's all this information coming in and not all of it's going to be pertinent to what I'm trying to, to figure out, but I got to go through it and kind of figure out, well, what's, what's the important things? What can I learn from this to make the right, the right deductions and solve the case quicker than, than Sherlock can? The rules and teaching for this game, this game is very simple to teach. I, I can teach it right now. You read an intro that kind of sets up the case. You have a map, a directory, and kind of a list of common places where you'll go visit, like the corner or Mycroft or, or Scotland Yard. And they all correspond to locations which reference entries in the casebook. So you read the intro, you decide where you want to go, Next, you read that entry, and then from there, you keep deciding where you want to go, who you want to talk to, until you think you are ready to solve the case, at which point you go to the back of the book and try and answer some questions. That's it. That's how you, you play the game, so you can get set up and going very easily. Now, on to the gameplay and mechanisms for this game. This game does have cases with their own unique stories and solutions. I'm not going to spoil anything about the game, uh, the different cases. I'm just going to talk about the mechanisms and the gameplay and how I feel about it. So the first thing that's probably the most important about this game is it's uh, a once and done game. Like I said, once you know the story, you know the solution, you're not really going to be able to get the same experience in going back and playing this over and over again. So once you've done the 10 cases, that's kind of it for the game. Each case has its own story as well. Now the game doesn't tell you the story. It's not like watching a movie where you're just following along. It kind of creates this world and leaves it up for you to discover it based on the decisions you make of where you want to go, who you're going to interact with. You're going to piece together this story in your own way rather than being led led through it. There's definitely been times when I've finished a case. I went to answer the questions at the end of a book and it'll ask a question about, about a character that I hadn't even met yet. And I was like, where did, where did they come from? So it really feels like there's this bigger world than what I'm getting, getting to experience. It's also a cooperative game. You could play it solo. I've played all my plays two player. I've, I've enjoyed that where you're you're kind of working together, you're going through the information, talking it through. It, it just makes for a really good, good experience. The next thing I want to talk about was the difficulty of the game. Like I mentioned in the rules, it's not difficult to teach or learn. The mechanisms are very simple. It's not even difficult to solve the cases. I mean, you could go to every location and read everything in the case booklet and then go and answer the questions at the end, the difficulty and the challenge comes in trying to solve the case as quickly as Sherlock Holmes. Because at the end, you're going to kind of compare notes with him and see how many different places he had to visit in order to solve the case. And then you're going to score yourself based on that. 
So that's the challenge is how can I visit the least number of possible people and locations and come to the right conclusions about the case and, and do it in the same amount of time as Sherlock. Something else about this game that kind of took me a couple plays to kind of wrap my head around is that there is no gated information in the, in the different cases. It's not like a choose your interaction or choose your adventure when you go to the different locations. So if I went to one location and I found out this information about this one character, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go over here now, I'm going to visit them, and I'm going to confront them about it. But then I would just go there and we would just have a, a pleasant conversation. It doesn't give me the option of arresting him or, or just talking to him. So it's very interesting in how the cases are written to a kind of accommodate that flow. You aren't really interacting with the story as well. You're just experiencing the story and not changing how the story is going to evolve. You're just trying to go through get as much information as you as you can to deduce the the different elements of the mystery or the case that you need to be able to solve. So it took a couple plays to kind of wrap my head around how the game played in that way. So then on to my final thoughts and rating for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. It's it's a challenge to to play. I love the challenge of the game of trying to solve it as quickly as Sherlock. I I love that it's a different gameplay experience. It's not very um, tactile. It's more cerebral. You're playing this out in your imagination. You're you're discussing. You're reading passages from a book or a newspaper, and the game takes place mostly in, in your mind and in the minds of the people who are playing. So it's very different than than other board game experiences. And the stories are interesting as well. You're trying to piece these together. So it really gives you this, this feel of discovery as you're, as you're playing as well. It's not a game that I'm always going to want to play. Like I said, it can be quite taxing on the mind. So you need to kind of be in the right mood to play it. The other thing that I like about it as well is you can kind of play it anywhere. I've sat down on the couch we've played it there you don't always need to play it on a table because there is no those there aren't those tactile elements to the game so for my final rating i'm going to give this game an 8 out of 10 i've played through half the the cases so far and i really look forward to playing through the other half so that's my review of sherlock holmes consulting detective jack the ripper and west and adventures if you like this video, go down and hit the like button. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We always appreciate when you do that. You can also go to our website, meepleleaf.com, where me and my co-host Jacob have a podcast bi-weekly where we talk about games for hours and hours and hours. All right, see you guys next time.